Hey, how's it going ladies and gentlemen? My name's Robo and as you can see this is RimWorld. And today we're going to go through a pretty short tutorial of, well I say short now but this is probably going to be pretty long but it's going to be broken down into multiple videos with different sections. So what I wanted to look at first here is uh, the main menu. And the reason I want to make a tutorial is because the game itself kind of not necessarily has a complexity to it but has a steep learning curve and in a sense it doesn't really present itself well at the time of course this is early access and it's in alpha this is the 14th update as you can see at the top left 0.14 I've actually been with the game since I think alpha 5 or 6 um, I got into the game pretty early <laughs> but I ended up buying the game at about 2013 when uh, I think it first came out on his website uh, don't quote me on that I think he's been working on this game for a while but it's been at least you know a couple three four years that I've been into this game now so the first thing we're gonna look at here is I just want to do a very brief overview of everything but the new colony button of course on your options you have all of your settings here you can go through and look at this all in your own uh, you can actually set a custom name here if you want as well at the top uh, I think it follows this format I haven't necessarily seen it work in action yet but I think if you at least have a first and last name, you can always add the nickname in later. Also take note of the development mode button here. This is kind of useful if you want to cheat a little bit or just mess around with the game, uh, not really be constricted or you know play sandbox mode basically. All you have to do is hit development mode and there'll be a little icon here called god mode. You click and you can just build anything instantly, which is awesome. Also in here, you have your keyboard configuration. Always useful to rebind keys if you don't like it. But follows the typical WASD setup for panning your camera, kind of like an RTS, as we'll see here in a bit. So the next thing is, well, probably my most favorite menu, it's the mods. Uh, you can see here I've got quite a bit. Uh, today we're just going to have the core enabled, which is the core game. Um, I don't know why it has a checkbox. I don't even know why you could turn this off. Oh, well, see, it even tells you. Uh, but anyways, you can see here I've downloaded quite a bit from the Steam Workshop. And, uh, of course, in your library on Steam itself, you can click the little workshop icon and you get that. Uh, you can also hit here, you won't see it because it's an overview. Uh, and you can also get mods from the forum, which is primarily where most of them are. They usually start out there and migrate over to Steam Workshop, from what I've been seeing. But it seems like most of the mod makers are pretty excited about the workshop, so they're moving all their mods over to it. And it's great, it's easy to maintain, you automatically get updates and whatnot. It's awesome uh, but to enable those you basically just check box you can see here that I have two mods that are local folder uh, these basically go in your steam apps kind of common slash rim world folder in your steam folder itself uh, and then there's a mods folder that you can put it in um, the community core library you can see here that it's a local file that's just sitting in my mods and this is because it wasn't on the workshop and I don't think it will be to be honest so pretty easy to install there Go ahead, close that. So the next screen we can see here is our three scenarios that we're going through. Um, for a new player, Crash Landed is the vanilla RimWorld experience. Uh, I suggest starting out on it. It's it's fun. It's challenging. It's not too easy. Uh, if you do want something a little easier, I've actually made a easy start here. Um, and this whole system is the scenario creation that was added in Alpha 14, which is great go down here and actually see that we can edit pretty much anything if I want to give myself 200 medicine the boom but I'll leave a link in the description for this workshop variant that I've made uh, it's pretty easy start with six dudes start with some research uh, everyone's pretty young so they won't be well they shouldn't be lazy <laughs> but uh, they won't have like health problems and whatnot uh, you also start with a good sum of stuff and some chickens just to uh, help you you know have sustenance throughout the winter and whatnot but we're just going to choose Crash Landed for now. This next screen, uh, this is pretty self-explanatory as well. Uh, kind of. Cassandra Classic on rough difficulty is pretty much your standard, uh, again, vanilla RimWorld. It's what the game used to ship with, but these three storytellers are all different. And what they basically do is they will make a timeline that exponentially increases the difficulty of the game. Uh, so pirate raids will get stronger. Uh, you may get stronger events happening like crazy climate changes and whatnot but in between here we also have free play to extreme this is just 
basically scales down the difficulty. Doesn't really mess with any of the timings uh, that the AI storyteller will use, it'll just scale them back quite a bit. Um, so if you want to start out on a pretty easy thing, I suggest choosing Miss Chillax here and choosing Base Builder Free Play. Keep in mind that you can also change this in the options menu in game anytime you want. So if you wanted to go to Mr. Randy Random here on Extreme halfway through your game because you feel like you're doing pretty good, uh, God help your soul, but you can do that. You also have your permadeath mode tick here, which is basically like Iron Man mode. If you've ever played XCOM or Europa Universalis 4, that kind of stuff. Uh, but to start out, I would suggest maybe just chillax on base builder. But the standard RimWorld experience here, if you like kind of a tough game, is rough. It's not going to be easy though. The next screen we see here, we just have a world creation. The seed thing's kind of like Minecraft, if you ever played that. Uh, just a string of words that will always generate the same type of map. We'll leave our size standard here. You don't really need to mess with this too much. It'll just change how big the world is. I guess it gives you more options if you want that. We can see here we've got a pretty interesting mushroom shaped world. Different colors here represent different biomes. So we have anywhere from ice sheet, tundra, deserts. Uh, looks like we got extreme desert. Didn't even know that was one. <laughs> We also have uh, Temperate Forest, which I suggest starting at. It's probably the easiest, most balanced. We have Tropical Rainforest, Large uh, Arid Shrubland, sorry. Um, and then we just have, that's basically it, an Arboreal Forest. Uh, I think, to be honest, the Temperate Forest is like the, the mid-range when it comes to warm climates. And Boreal Forest is the mid-range when it comes to cold climates. So whichever one you want to kind of delve into, both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, and they all have different animal types as well, so expect to see more kind of woolly, larger animals in the colder, and you know maybe snakes and cobras and all that crazy crap in the desert, for example. But it's gonna pick something easy here. You can also go into the modes here, and of course this is just biomes without anything. I also have elevation. It's going to pretty much determine how many mountainous areas that you'll see in the map. Um, I also have the rainfall. Not really, not too much, uh, I, again, just how much it rains. So it may affect your sh your solar panels because they won't be able to get that much sunlight. Uh, temperature, kind of important. I uh, usually go to full and just kind of look around for uh, pretty mountainous kind of areas. Uh, let's take a look. You can also see the elevation and all these stats at the top left, so. I like to take kind of a higher elevation because it usually spawns with more mountains and stuff that I can dig into. We'll select the site. Now on our next screen, this is perhaps the most important of all of them. This is actually selecting your colonist. And we can see here that we have a random assortment of people. Uh, you also have the randomize button and you have the option to mess with their names, which I thought was pretty cool. So change them to whatever you want. There are mods that allow you to tweak all of these settings, change the names, change how they look and whatnot. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. It's called prepare carefully and it's actually been updated for alpha 14 sort of by the mod maker still waiting on a full compatibility mod but it works for now great mod to be honest but something you want to look at in your first starting game is you want to have someone who's basically good at growing someone who's kind of good at medicine uh, maybe some other things and then perhaps someone who's good at constructing as well along with mining um, and this is just going to give you a good kind of spread. Uh, we can see this person is good at growing. Keep note of the capable of, so they can't do any dumb labor, so they can't haul stuff, which kind of sucks. Just gonna keep re-rolling here until we find something. Uh, great at animals, not so great at everything else. So we have a grower, we have a doctor, and we want a architect. Perfect. So you can see here we have a pretty good spread, uh, pretty much, well these two people can't do dumb labor though, that's the problem. So we'll try to get a farmer of some sort. There we go, awesome. For some reason a scientist is great at growing, I don't care, I'm not going to question it. She's also great at research, so when she's not growing she can research stuff for us. Um, and capable of nothing. This person's capable of scary stuff, which is kind of a problem. 
which means no firefighting. But we're gonna go with it anyways. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, subscribe if you want. Not gonna force that down your throat. I hate people to do that on YouTube. Uh, also, leave a comment if you have any questions or want to see something in more detail. My next video is going to go pretty much in detail into this. This whole thing. Oh, this is just a mess, isn't it? All these buttons and numbers and words and stuff. But I'll try to delve into it, give a brief overview of what you need to worry about and what pretty much everything does. So, I'll see you guys next time.